is no question working class politics today are alive and well in Canada, and I would like to argue that Unifor is absolutely right in the middle of it. We've had some major input, for example, on the last federal budget. I take a look at the increases in CPP. What inspires me the most is when I see the activism within our union, whether that's fighting for better contracts or it's fighting in the social arena or the political arena. Things like the Women's March, things like fighting uh, provincial governments, which we've been doing a lot in the last year and really making a difference like we recently saw in British Columbia. It, it just, that really, you know, gives me a sense of pride. 2016 contract negotiations for the Detroit Three was historic. It was historic because everything was, frankly, pointed in the opposite direction as it related to success. So we took a very, very aggressive approach in this set of negotiations. Well, there was clear signs to us that General Motors had planned on closing the facility. We started going out and really involving our community and our membership. We had some of the local politicians supporting us. We ended up doing lots of interviews. There was a sense of solidarity with everybody fighting for the same thing as it impacts the whole community. We ended up getting a product commitment for Oshawa. It gave our members a sense of security for the future. And then we went into bargaining with Fiat Chrysler and negotiated a major investment for our Brampton facilities. And then of course we went to Ford and we locked in the most high tech engine program to ever be developed by Ford. So we hit a home run. And then we went into bell bargaining. It was so important. We really did now put some walls around Ma Bell, saying you can't outsource anymore. We started talking about bringing work back in. So we really started to shift the entire dynamic. La manifestation la plus importante qu'on a réussi à mettre en place, c'est au, euh, au lac Saint-Jean, à Dolbeau. On a réussi à mobiliser 5000 personnes. Donc des élus municipaux, des représentants du gouvernement, toute agence politique différente ou autre. Mais ce qui a été encore plus important, c'est qu'on a le premier ministre était avec nous dans la marche, avec les entreprises, avec le milieu, avec la communauté, et on a marché dans les rues de Dolbeau. Donc, quand on réussit à amener le premier ministre à marcher avec nous dans la rue, vous comprendrez que la mobilisation euh, et la cohésion est, est très solide. Là. Donc, le premier ministre a même déclaré publiquement que Unifor était un incontournable dans le dossier du bois d'œuvre pour faire pression sur le fédéral. Quand le premier ministre déclare ça publiquement, C'est pas rien, là. For the first time in more than 43 years, our members are actually working on positive changes that impact our, our, our workplaces, our communities in really positive ways. Some very good labor law and employment standards law is being introduced. Some of the input we gave was obviously heard. It's sad that we should have such a disparity in some members of society being able to go yachting and other people cannot afford to get a really warm downfill coat for winter. And I'm very proud of my union because they were instrumental in being involved in the Fight for Fairness campaign. What the province has finally done in, the, in introducing the Changing Workplaces Review, this comprehensive review, really just validates what our members have been saying all along, and that is that there's a real shift that has kicked off the balance of the middle class in Ontario. Our members were ready for the fight, they were ready to go, they were mobilized, they were meeting with their MPPs, they were calling their MPPs, they were entirely submersed in this comprehensive review. So many of the recommendations that Unifor made are actually reflected in the final report. British Columbia voted for change, and we were a big part of making that happen. Our members were present in a number of campaigns, and they made a critical difference. It was their work that often helped to push it over the top. On the member-to-member -member campaign, it was very interesting because we had to go to our members and do knock. Most of the target ridings that Unifor was involved in, all of them got elected. Only one that wasn't elected, and it was really exciting. We 
we'd been involved with Unifor's campaign against the cuts in long-term care. This emerged as one of the central themes in the election. The government had taken over $8 million out of long-term care and uh, claimed that this had had no effect on the lives of residents in long-term care. Uh, the voices of employees in nursing homes uh, organized through Unifor had really uh, put the lie to this claim. I am devastated about the cuts. I've been doing PCW work for 28 years and their care, their quality care is not what you want it to be. It's not what it was 10 years ago because we just don't have the hands-on to deliver that care and that's not fair to them. We did postcard campaigns, we organized meetings with MLAs, we had roundtables with the opposition leaders, including a massive roundtable discussion with the health minister. And we told him that we would not stop until these cuts were reversed. And in the, the budget just before the election, they put $3 million back into long-term care funding. Not all of the money that had been taken out, but a return of some of the funding. This was our members who did this. And in the end, we humbled this premier. In Saskatchewan, we're fighting against privatization of Crown corporations and against uh, wage and benefit rollbacks that the Bradwall government is seeking to introduce. Along with Unifor right now and, and a number of other locals, we do have a big campaign on um, Save Our Crowns. It's vital. It's very important. These are grassroots corporations that have been built from the ground up by our parents, by our grandparents, our great-grandparents that were meant to serve the, the people of Saskatchewan. Unifor has been a, a, a huge driving uh, force. There's been many, many rallies. We did one back in March in Regina that was the largest rally at the legislature in many, many years. In Manitoba, there's a similar approach. Austerity economics, slashing jobs, firing teachers, firing healthcare workers, introducing wage freezes, and uh, we're doing a fight back. There's been a lot of terrible trade deals that have impacted working class people. Pre-NAFTA, we had a $12 billion trade surplus in manufacturing. Today, we have a $120 billion trade deficit. It's sure that we don't want that the wood is included in the negotiation of the because there's always a danger to be sacrificed. Because in Quebec, contrary to the American department, we have the real price of the wood, so we shouldn't have taxes or limitations of exportation. Because if you think that we would lose 3 or 4 points, d'exportation de, de, sur les volumes, ça veut dire 14 séries qui devraient fermer. The renegotiation of NAFT and other trade deals can't be about philosophy. It has to be about putting people to work. And we can do it when we go to the bargaining table and understand that we're firing from a position of strength. We need to bargain tough, we need to be strategic, and we need to have some guts. Sisters and brothers, friends, U.S. duties are an attack on the very principle of fair trade. The U.S. can currently only supply two-thirds of its needs. In short, they need us, but we're fighting back. Unifor is fighting back. So, maybe for the manifestation today, pan-Canadian, I think it's important to send a message to the federal government. Je viens ici aujourd'hui pour la crise du bois d'oeuvre. C'est vraiment une mobilisation qui va faire que va avoir une entente de qualité. On n'est pas armes égales, comme on dit, là, pour faire face à du dumping. Et nous, on est concernés aussi d'aluminium parce qu'on est à l'eau. On est à l'eau euh, de, de vivre ce que les papetières et le foresterie a vécu depuis les années 2000. Donc, il faut être proactif. As a woman, um, having other women in politics making those decisions, that's important. It's inspiring and it just only pushes me to want to do more. On a envoyé un message de solidarité et euh, de condoléances aux musulmans. On a participé à une manifestation ici à Montréal avec plusieurs de nos membres. On a euh, 
aussi dénoncer cette violence-là, puis de la tuerie à la, mo à la mosquée. Euh, quand on est méfiant, puis qu'on ne connaît pas euh, les positions des autres, bien, notre rôle d'uniforme, c'est d'informer nos membres sur la différence de ces gens-là, comment les accueillir, puis de combattre finalement toute injustice euh, à l'égard de ces gens-là. Are we an inclusive enough organization that our leadership and our membership, our demographics are actually represented? Our union has embarked on um, this year-long, absolutely important equity audit. But really what it is is a review of us getting to know ourselves. If you isolate people, if people don't have a chance to, to be part of what we do, then you know they're not going to have their say, their voice. And I think that's important. It really allows us to shape the future direction of the, direction of the union. Our union, we try to work with employers in some cases, in a lot of cases, to provide opportunities for those that other, wouldn't otherwise have it. Things like the pathways to shipbuilding in the East Coast, it's very important that we bring in people from the Indigenous community that just want a chance to succeed. It isn't easy to get up and go, you know, apply for school, move out of your community to a city far away from home and go to take a two-year program and stick with it. This program gives us the opportunity to, like they helped us get places to stay, they helped us with the moving costs, we get, you know, living allowances, and so far, I mean, I've been having a great time. You know, we've, we've got one of our workers in the shipyard out there, Dave Latticer, that's just been a champion of Indigenous rights and a champion of promoting the Indigenous community and Lana Payne, our regional director out there. It started there and it, through other conversations, it just took off. There's a great sense of pride that you feel when you walk into that room. And, you know, when you talk to these students, they're proud of what they're doing. It, it's a phenomenal feeling for me. It's beneficial for me, but also for my family because I can provide for my kids and hopefully retire at the shipyard. Governments and employers might not like us, but they have to respect us. And they respect us not just because of the leadership team and the work that the team does. The respect comes from the fact that we can we organize and mobilize our members. And because those members are willing to put themselves on the line every single day uh, to push back. And that is what needs to be respected. Unifor gave me that hand up. They recognized the passion, um, you know, and, and they nurtured it, right? They helped me nurture it. And they reached out to me and, you know, gave me the opportunity to be what I can be. I just want to say thank you to Unifor for giving me the opportunity to grow and to be an activist.